In this video, I'll be going through the 2023 Electricity and Electromagnetism exam. Question 1. A set of parallel plates 0.05 meters apart are connected to 12 volts. Show that the value of the electric field strength between the plates is 240 and state its unit. We know that the electric field strength is voltage over separation, where we know both. Which indeed gives me 240. And because we have units of volts divided by units of meters, our units are volts per meter. Though you could also write newtons per coulomb. On the diagram above, draw the electric field lines to represent the field between the plates. The long side of our voltage source is the positive side, making this the positive plate and this one the negative. Between the plates, we're going to see parallel field lines roughly the same distance apart, and at the ends, we're going to see them curve. And our field lines are always going to point towards the negative plate. Use physics principles to explain how the electric force on an electron would vary as it is moved from the negative plate to the positive plate. The electric field strength is indicated by the separation of the field lines, and as we can see as we would journey from one plate to the other, the width of these lines does not change and so neither does the electric field strength. We know that the force that a charge would experience is the electric field strength times its charge. If this is an electron, we know that charge will not change, because this is a fundamental property of the universe. And as we've just discussed, the electric field strength won't change, and so then neither will the force. So let's write that down. E is the same at all points between the plates, and the electron charge Q is a constant. Since F equals EQ, F will not change. An electron is moved from point A to point B, as shown below. Calculate the change in electric potential energy as the electron moves from point A to point B on the diagram opposite below. Electric potential energy is given by the equation EQD, where we calculated the electric field strength to be 240, the charge of an electron is given on the formula sheet, and the distance moved is our 0.05 which gives me 1.92 times 10 to the minus 18 joules to three significant figures. The electron is now moved 0.05 meters from point C to D. What is the change in electric potential energy as the electron moved from point C to point D? If we were to imagine our electron between these plates, it is going to experience an upwards force attracting it to the positive plate. Moving with or against this force will change the electric potential energy. However, moving at right angles to it, such as what we're doing here, will not be affected by this force, and therefore will not have any effect on the electric potential energy. So we'd expect no change. Use physics principles to explain any differences in the change in electric potential energies found in parts I and II. In part I, the electron moves in the direction of the force, therefore work is performed and the electric potential energy changes. In part II, the electron moves at a right angle to the force, and therefore no work is performed and the electric potential energy is unchanged. Question 2. A simplified version of the circuit in a camping oven is shown below. The oven consists of two sections. The top section has an element with 6.2 ohm resistance and a lamp with 4.2 ohm resistance. Show that the total resistance of the top section is 2.5 ohms. Because these two resistances are in parallel, we need to use this equation here. Solving this for R by taking the inverse of both sides gives me 2.5038 or 2.5 ohms to two significant figures, which is what we're trying to show. Calculate the current flowing from the power supply to the oven when both sections are working. Recalling Ohm's law, we know that the voltage in the circuit is equal to the current in the circuit times the total resistance in the circuit, where we know the voltage, that is 12 volts, but we don't know the total resistance. To find our total resistance, we have these two sections which are in series with each other. We already found the resistance of this section was 2.5 ohms. 
So we now need to use the same process we used here to find the resistance in this section and then add those together because they're in series. So what I'm going to do is take this term here and when replacing 6.2 and 4.2 with 8.2 and 4.2, we will find the resistance of our bottom section, which as mentioned before, we can find the total resistance by just adding with our 2.5, which gives me 5.28 ohms to three significant figures. And now solving this equation here for current by dividing both sides by resistance and now putting our numbers in which gives me 2.27 amps to three significant figures. While both sections are working correctly, the lamp in the bottom section develops a fault and its resistance decreases. Use physics principles to explain what happens to the brightness of the other lamp. So the question is asking, if this resistance here were to decrease, what would happen to the brightness of this lamp here? Brightness is described by the power, which is current times voltage. Reducing the resistance of this lamp is going to reduce the total resistance in the circuit. Now we know that V is equal to IR. And so if more current is able to flow through this bulb and its resistance stays the same, then the voltage it consumes will go up as well. If the current and voltage increase, then so too will the power and therefore so too will the brightness. The total circuit resistance will decrease and the circuit current will increase. Since V equals IR, if the other lamp's R is constant while I increases, the V it consumes will increase. The total circuit V is always 12 volts, so the V in the bottom lamp will decrease. Brightness is described by power. Since P equals IV and both the V and I in the other lamp increase, so will the power and brightness. The lamp in the bottom section now stops working. Calculate the amount of energy converted to heat in two minutes by the 8.2 ohm resistor. We know that power is energy per time. Rearranging that for energy by multiplying both sides by T. Where we know the time, that's at two minutes or 120 seconds, but we don't know the power. If our bottom lamp here stops working, we can assume that no current is flowing through this lamp and all the current is now flowing through here. Now we know that our power is our current times the voltage where we don't know either the current or the voltage in this specific resistor. What we can do though is find our current because we know that the total voltage in the circuit is equal to the total current where because all the current in the circuit flows through our 8.2 ohm resistor, they are one and the same. And this is multiplied by our total circuit resistance. Solving this for our current by dividing both sides by resistance and swapping them around. Our total voltage is 12 and our total resistance is the resistance of our 8.2 ohm resistor plus the resistance of this section here, which we found to be 2.5 earlier. So we can just substitute that in. Which gives me 1.12 amps to three significant figures. Now coming back to our power equation here, even though we don't know the voltage, we do know that V equals IR, so we can make that substitution, which gives us I squared R, where we've already found the current, and we know the resistance is 8.2, since we're finding the power in this resistor. Putting those numbers in, gives me 10.3 watts to three significant figures, and now putting that into our final equation, gives me 1,240 joules to three significant figures. Question three, the diagram below shows a metal axle that is free to roll on two parallel metal rails. The rails and the axle are in a magnetic field. The ends of the rails are connected to a 120 volt power supply. And we're given the strength of the magnetic field, the length of our axle, the distance between parallel metal rails, the width of our magnetic field, our total effective resistance, in addition to the voltage of our power supply. Draw an arrow on the diagram above to show the direction of the electromagnetic force that acts on the axle when the power supply is switched on. 
Now, considering this is our positive side, because when we're looking at a power supply, the longest end is the positive end, which means that this one is the negative end. Our current is going to flow from positive to negative, so in this direction here. And if our field lines are coming out of the page, which we know because these dots means it's coming out of the page, take your right hand and point your thumb in the direction of the current, and your fingers out of the page, your palm, which indicates the direction of the force, will be pointing towards the left. Calculate the strength of the magnetic force on the axle when the power supply is turned on. The strength of the magnetic force is found by the equation BIL, where we know the strength of our magnetic field, as we're given it here. And we know the length of our conductor, that is this distance here but we don't yet know the current. But what we do know is the voltage and the resistance, so we can find it. We know that voltage is equal to current times resistance, solving this for current by dividing both sides by R and swapping them around, where our voltage was 120 and our resistance was 42.1, which gives me 2.85 amps to three significant figures. Putting that and our other numbers into our final equation, gives me 0.0194 newtons to three significant figures. The power supply is removed and the metal axle is given a push so that it is moving to the right at 3.10 meters per second, as shown in the diagram. Clearly mark the negative end of the axle on the diagram above. To do this, we once again need to use our right hand rule, where as before, our fingers point out of the page, and because our rod is moving to the right, that means our charges are also moving to the right, which is where we need to point our thumb, and in doing so, your thumb will be pointing downwards, indicating that our positive charges are going to be forced down, and our negative charges will be forced in the opposite direction, so towards the top. Calculate the voltage induced in the axle immediately after it is set moving. The equation for our voltage is BVL, where we know our magnetic field strength from before, and we're given our velocity, and now whereas before we used our 8.40 as our length, because the current we were describing was only operating within this section, what we're now describing is the effect of charges within the entire axle, and so we need to use its entire length which gives me 0.0239 volts to three significant figures. With the power supply still disconnected, a wire is connected between the rails, and the axle is given a push so that it is moving to the right at 3.1 meters per second. Describe the motion of the axle after it is set moving. Now, what we learned above is that if there is a current flowing through this axle in this downwards direction, then it will experience a force in this direction. And we learned in this section here that with this velocity in this direction, the positive charges are forced downwards, and so this is the direction of our current. This tells us in our situation here that a velocity in this direction will produce a downwards current, which will produce a force in this direction, which is opposing our motion and will cause the axle to decelerate. As the axle moves, it induces a downwards current, which interacts with the magnetic field to produce a force to the left. This force opposes the original rightwards motion, causing it to decelerate.